Most of the time, whenever we apply a modifier in Swift UI, we actually create a new view with that change applied. We don't change it directly in place. If you think about it, this behavior makes sense. Our views only hold the exact properties we give them. So if we set the background color or the font, for example, there's no place to store the extra information. We're gonna look at why this happened shortly, but first, I wanna look at the practical implications of that. Have a look at this code right here. Button, hello world, no action code, with a frame width of 200, height of 200. I'm gonna ask SwiftUI to give this whole thing a background color of red. So I'll say dot background dot red. So the question is, what do you think that'll look like when it runs? Have a think, you can pause the video if you want to. Uh, press Command R, you can see, because chances are you guessed wrong. That's what you get you don't see a 200 by 200 red button with hello world in the middle. Instead, you see a 200 by 200 empty white square with hello world written in the middle and a red rectangle directly around that hello world. And you can understand what's happening here if you think about the way modifiers work. Each one creates a new struct with that modifier applied, rather than just trying to set a property on the view. You can get a little peek into the underbelly here of what Swift UI is doing uh, in our button action. I'll say uh, print type of self dot body. Now this type of method or function, sorry, is built into Swift and it prints the exact type of a particular value. So asking it, what's the exact type of our view body? Let's run it again and I'll press the button this time. Down here, that is the actual type of our button. Modify content, modify content, button text, background style modifier, color, frame layout. You can see two things here. First, every time we modify a Swift UI view, we actually apply that with generics, which means we get a modified content containing a modified content containing a button of text and so forth. And when we apply multiple modifiers, they just stack up. This is a modified content containing a modified content containing a da 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 They just get bigger and bigger and bigger. And so to read what the actual type is, you want to start from the innermost type. The innermost type here is this, uh, well, the whole thing here. We have our button text, our original thing, that's this thing here, boom, contained inside a modified content that also includes a background style modifier of a color. Around that, we have a modified content, takes our first view, the button plus background color, and applies a frame layout, giving it a larger frame. As you can see, we end up with this modified content just stacking up further and further and further. Each one takes a view to transform, plus the actual change to make. Apply a background style, apply a frame layout, and so forth, rather than modifying the view directly. What this means is that your modifier order matters. So if we were to rewrite this code, just simply put background red after the frame, the same code, then you might get the result you expected. Boom, a large 200 by 200 red box with hello world in the middle of it. The best way to think about this just for now is to imagine SwiftUI renders your view after every single modifier. So as soon as you say background red, it colors the background red, regardless of what frame gets applied later on. If you then later expand the frame, it won't magically redraw the background, it's already rendered it as it was in red. Of course, this isn't actually how SwiftUI works, that'd be really terribly, but a real performance nightmare, but a neat mental shortcut to use just while you're learning. An important side effect is that modifiers can be applied multiple times to increase the effect. Each one simply adds to whatever was there before. For example, uh, SwiftUI gives us the padding modifier. If we say text hello world with padding here, it means add a little bit of space around the view so it doesn't push up directly against other views or the edge of the screen. So if we apply padding and then a background color of say red, then we're saying apply space, then color the text and the space red. But we could then say, actually copy and paste this a few times, like so, 
So we'll do padding background red, padding background blue, padding background green, and then padding background yellow. And what we'll get is more and more padding with different background colors applied, making this effect right here. So views having multiple borders, as if it were, add padding, render blue, uh, render red, add padding, render blue, add padding, render green, again, and again, and again. Again, it doesn't actually do that. It'd be horrible performance, but it's a good thing to think about while you're learning.